Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, October 9th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Uh, let's take a look at the market, specifically the S&P 500 to start with. I've been talking about this every day in the day trading room, but just to kind of recap, you know, we had this big flush down, we had this bounce consolidation, had another flush down, started to bounce. I was looking for potentially another leg down below these lows, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. A, obviously we've had a nice strong rally, but B, kind of the focus here, I've been uh, looking at this consolidation box and we've really blasted up through that. And so just just based on the, the, you know, the price action here and kind of leading up to the election, uh, I really think that we're we're more going to be in a bullish mode. Now we're I think we'll probably most likely see some still some violent swings in both ways. But I, I'm, I'm looking for a potentially break of new highs, uh, you know, going into the election and, and, and beyond. So now once the election happens, that's a different story, you know, uh, We'll, we'll we'll readdress that at that point, but leading up to the election, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna bust through the uh, the current highs, and so uh, and I'll talk about this in a minute. But we we did shed one of our bunkers today, and especially if we get some more down movement into next week, we'll potentially be short, uh, shedding some more of our short delta, lighting lightening up on our short delta. Uh, we we still will keep some because obviously the market's going to do what it's going to do and it could certainly tank still that you know it's not like it can't do it anymore but i think the most likely scenario is is higher prices and so we'll still carry some short delta but we're definitely going to look to potentially lighten up as we see opportunities to do so so look for that into next week uh, and with that let's jump into the alerts uh, starting with Monday, had a opening trade in SPX, did a weekly double calendar. Uh, ended up closing that out on Thursday and just booked a tiny profit, basically a scratch. Uh, the implied volatility contracted between the front and the back week with the big up move in the market. So didn't get the opportunity to book a really nice profit, but still booked a green, uh, green trade nonetheless. Uh, next trade, opening trade in SPX. So we added an iron duck here. Uh, with 13 days to expiration. So let's go to SPX and check out our analyze tab here. So, so this that duck price has already run higher since then, uh, but we've got some time, still a chance it could get back to the duck head. So we'll, we'll hold this. Uh, obviously if price continues to run higher and there's very little chance of getting back to the max profit area, we will just book that. Otherwise we will hold this close to expiration. The other piece that we have, I'll just go ahead and show it now. It's a, a, an alert that we did today. And this is a another weekly double calendar in SPX. So price is hanging out. Uh, excuse me, we did this Thursday. Price is hanging out uh, just, just right of center, just high of center. Uh, so still plenty of room to roam around in. If, if price kind of stays here or higher, we may look to add another one of these on Monday in the same expiration cycle, just kind of layer into that. So that's the plan in SPX. Closing adjusting trade in gold. So we closed out one of our iron condors, booked over 35% of max profit on that one. And then, um, and then I'll get to another gold trade before we go to the platform. And then XBI, we had a, a long call. And if you remember what we did here is we, we got bullish on XBI because uh, even when the market was really flushing, XBI was staying super strong. So when we got this pullback, we got in uh, with a long call. Now we took a little bit of heat on it, but then this thing did just explode like we expected it to. So ended up booking a, a really nice profit on XBI. Next trade, opening adjusting trade. So here's the uh, another iron gold, uh, iron condor that we added in gold. And uh, so let's go to the platform and take a look at that forward slash GC. Nice up move in gold today. So uh, we ended up taking one off today and booking another about 50% of max profit on that. And here's the one that from the alert that we just added. So pretty close to where we put it on. Uh, still well within range. No profit or loss on that one yet. Opening trade in SPX. So here's that weekly double calendar that I mentioned. And then here's the closing one that I mentioned that we took a, basically a scratch on, booked a tiny profit. And then here's that closing trade. I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself, but here is that closing uh, trade in on that one of our gold iron condors, booked over 40% of max profit on that piece. 
Did a closing trade in QQQ, so we had a bunker on. It wasn't quite to that 60 days expiration we look for. We were at 70 days today, uh, the, but the P&L was starting to kind of sag into that valley, and so we didn't want to hold it for another 10 days and, and just kind of let that theta decay on us, so we went ahead and just closed that out. And, then, and that also lightened up our short delta, like I mentioned, so we took that, that bunker off. Uh, and then SPX, here's the, here's the closing trade on one of our SPX iron ducks. Price ran higher, uh, booked, uh, booked big profit on that trade. Uh, so we're out of that one. So those are the, all the alerts. We were a little, little light on the number of alerts uh, compared to other weeks, but um, just waiting for some opportunity. That tends to be what happens when you see the market ripping higher as we just kind of close out positions and, and wait for additional opportunities. Let's take a look at some of our other positions. In ES, we've still got a couple of long put verticals here. One is out of range and then the other one is out of range as well. So we may look to close one of these next week if we get a little bit of downside, get back some of that, uh, some of that profit. Uh, we may close out one of these just to kind of, again, lighten our short delta load. NG, We've got, we've still got this short strangle in Natty Gas. You can see price is, is dead centered. Implied volatility did spike. So even though we were centered, uh, we were down a little bit. Now we're back to about even uh, on this piece. So just continuing to manage that back to profits. Uh, same thing in ZB. We've got an adjusted short strangle here. Price is hanging out kind of in the lower end of the range right here. Uh, we've still got a decent amount of premium in those calls. So you can see if we, you know, if price does continue lower, we will roll down those calls. But for now, uh, we're just going to hold. We've got 42 days, so we've got a, a decent amount of time left there. Apple, another short delta position that we've got. Price has, has moved out of range as Apple has moved up. Uh, same with uh, John Deere. Now, this one's still in October, and we've only got a week left to expiration, but we're already at, ma we're at max loss, so there's no reason to roll right now. I mean, the only thing that can happen is it could benefit us if price does make a big move lower. So we're just going to hold this into next week and then either roll or this may be one that we close as well. Uh, John Deere, you know, it didn't really it didn't really see the downside action that we saw in the market. It just continued to grind higher. So not not uh, not seeing the downside that that uh, the rest of the market saw. DIA. So we've got a couple of short call verticals here. Again, we'll look at potentially cutting one of these loose. Price is out of range on that one, and then just barely out of range on this one. So we may shed one of these next week if we get a little bit of a down move. Uh, IWM. Some more short delta position. So here we've got another bunker. Uh, this is one that you know, as we get closer to that 60 days, we will probably close this as well. And then we've got a couple of long put verticals that are a little bit out of range. Uh, so, so again, same situation. We'll look at, we're we're going to look at our overall portfolio. We're going to look at our overall short delta and decide which ones to keep, which ones to cut loose. We, again, we still want to keep some short delta uh, because we still want to have that protection to the downside if the market does move lower. I mean, there's so many things going on with the stimulus and the Fed and uh, the election coming up and things that, that, you know, we could definitely still see some, some crazy volatility and some downside action. So it's not like we are going to get completely bullish, but just wanting to lighten that up a little bit. I already showed you QQQ. SMH, we've got a, an adjusted short strangle here. Price is hanging out in the upper end of the range. So just holding that, if we get a little bounce back to center is what we're looking for there. I mentioned SPX. SPY, we've got an iron condor. Hanging out right here. We may look to add another iron condor in SPY. This one is in November uh, with uh, 42 days. So we would probably do that in the same cycle. Uh, or we may wait until December gets down under 60 days and add one there. Depending on what price does uh, 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 in SPY, we'll, we'll determine what we want to do. Also, especially after today, implied volatility really contracted. So we would want a little bit of a pop in implied volatility to start adding some premium. This is the first time in a long time where we've seen uh, the IV percentile in SPY under 50. So the market is saying no fear, baby, no fear. We'll see. Uh, XBI I mentioned, oh, XBI, we've got another piece on here. We've got this adjusted strangle here. Price is hanging out in the upper end of the range. If we look at just the untested put side, still got a decent amount of premium in there. So not looking to roll the puts up yet, but if price does continue higher, we will roll those puts higher. And then lastly, XLK, 
another bunker here you know this is another one that we'll look to potentially close if we if we do get a, a sharp move lower you know it's still a chance we could book a little profit on this one uh, and then before we before we let that go we've got a, a long put vertical uh, that's a little bit out of range here so could use some downside to get back in range on that and then also a long put. Now this was, uh, we were profitable on this one. We were looking for a little bit more profit, but never got that third leg down. So price bounced back up. So we're down a little bit on this trade. Uh, this one is in October, so it expires next week. Uh, it's got seven days to expiration currently. So we will look to close that out next week. Hopefully we get a little downside action before we have to do that. Uh, so those are all the positions. Those are all the alerts. Let's take a look. I'll give you a quick recap of our day trading for the week. I did a, uh, a little bit more in, in detail summary video uh, that I posted in the day trading Facebook group. So if you want to check out more, you can go there. But Mighty90 for the week plus 242. Uh, today was the, uh, the best day on the Mighty90. Made 553 this morning on the Mighty90s. Uh, pairs trades only took pairs trades on Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, four in total. All four were winners, uh, so we uh, continue to to do well on these pairs pairs trades. Still finalizing the details on the class for the pairs trades as well as the runner strategy class, uh, and and we booked a total of four hundred and thirty dollars on the runners. Small red day today, uh, but overall positive for the week. And our winning percentage is down a little bit. Now on these runners, I don't really pay that much attention to the winning percentage because we're really just cutting our losses pretty quick. So we're going to take some losses, uh, but the the uh, the value is letting these things run. And the P&L obviously is the main thing that matters. So that is our recap, my friends. Hope everybody has a great week. Oh, the other thing is that we're going to do in the day trading room. We've been talking about it in there, but for those of you who may have missed it, we are going to start doing some live stream sessions uh, a little bit later in the morning. So instead of just streaming for the first 90 minutes, on some days we're going to start about an hour or 45 minutes after the market opens and then stream a little bit later in the morning so that, we, so that you can see some of the things that we're doing in closing out some of these runners. Um, we'll still, we'll still do some the first 90 minutes, but we'll, I, I, uh, you know, I got a consensus, pretty good consensus from the folks in the day trading room who, who mentioned, you know, going a little bit later would be cool. So we can do the core portfolio alerts kind of in the first hour and then jump on the live stream a little bit later to, uh, to manage some of these, some of these runners a little bit later into the morning. So check out, be, make sure you keep your eye on the, in the live stream room. There's a calendar that we'll be updating uh, with the dates and the time. So make sure you're, you're keeping an eye on that. And uh, look forward to seeing you there Monday. On Monday, we will be doing 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Central. So the normal first 90 minutes. Uh, but look at the calendar for future dates and times. So look forward to that. Everybody have a fantastic weekend. We will talk to you next week.